Hello, good evening, it's uh, Deal Fazal here, market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you a review of the European markets for Monday's session, a weekend, uh, obviously, uh, market analysis for Monday's session, uh, which is going to be the 21st of March 2016. Okay, this is a European market wrap-up, brought to you courtesy of CFDs.com, be sure to visit the specialist web and CFD brokerage, and certainly qualify for the uh, 25% new account opening bonus. Alternatively, you can visit the... Uh, the educational site, which is www.cfds.education, to certainly learn more. Okay, now let's try and decide for exactly what's happening here with regards to European markets. Uh, going into Monday's session, let's just bring up the economic data or the potential market moving events. You have the European current account, obviously that will affect the Euro. German Bubba monthly report, again, that will affect the uh, health and the stealth of the Eurozone. Uh, CBI data for the UK, again, that will give us a gauge on uh, the uh, the actual growth and forecast going forward, especially with regards to Brexit concerns that were warned about last week by uh, the uh, the BOE. So again, that's going to be interesting. Okay, in terms of US data, you have the uh, Chicago Fed activity, existing home sales, and then obviously you've got Australian CB leading indicator and European consumer confidence as well. Uh, and then you got Mr. Lockhart speaking in the evening tomorrow. So given the fact that Mr. Bullard was certainly hawkish on... Um, on a Friday, uh, indicating obviously uh, uh, stagnation in terms of um, uh, employment growth or a peak in employment, uh, and also talking about interest rate obviously on the horizon, etc. But earliest comments basically were were certainly of a hawkish nature and uh, certainly supporting or counteracting Miss um, Yellen's dovish rhetoric, given the fact that he is quite an important member. Okay, now in terms of uh, causes for concern in terms of fundamentals going into Monday. Uh, you have NTQE rhetoric from Mr. Weedman, so again, that's going to uh, uh, force the euro higher and obviously hurt European equities. Uh, Mr. Bullard, obviously, hawkish rhetoric, which I've talked about. There's been no Argos bid for the FTSE, so, um, or the retail, home retail group, which is Argos. So again, that's going to be net, net negative for the FTSE. Uh, we have had oil prices lower. I mean, we still, uh, we've had a pivot low of $39 thus far. So given the fact that oil rigs certainly are on the increase and uh, we have got concerns with regards to Chinese debt, and the Greek bailout as well. So, quite a lot of headwinds, headwinds building here, folks. Especially with the, with the uh, European markets now certainly are, are outstretched, and uh, and the Euro USD still uh, languishing around that 1.113. Now it's currently 1. Um, sorry, 1.3. Now it's currently at 1.270. So again, that's going to be interesting as to uh, the direction of the euro, especially with Mr. Weedman's anti QE comments. Now let's uh, revise. Let's go review the Euro USD itself. Okay, so we've had a gap higher. Given the fact that we did open up at one point, so you gap lower, sorry, and we close the gap very quickly, and uh, we certainly are holding this support at one point one two fifty zone. The ten minute chart certainly seems to be making a base or a potential for a move higher. Uh, the Euro USD previous resistance equals support. So again, we'll see exactly how this uh, trades for now uh, in terms of uh, the Euro USD going forward on the sixty minute chart, the four hour chart. Let's just bring up the four hour. The four hour still remains bullish, given the fact that we are still. In that series of higher highs and higher lows, so again, uh, it will be interesting to see how the euro USD moves from here. Now, obviously, if we we if we ignore the weaker German inflation and weaker labour costs out of the eurozone and focus on Mr. Weidman's comments of capping the QE, then again, that's going to cause the uh, the euro to certainly uh, appreciate further. Okay, at the expense of the US dollar, given the uh, the actual uh, monetary policy divergence isn't as substantial as everybody has been expecting. So again, that's going to be an interesting scenario. Uh, nevertheless okay so certainly something to focus on there okay now in terms of the daily chart of the euro usd uh, it certainly has held that double top resistance so it'll be interesting to see how the euro usd can react from here whether it continues its run higher up to the next level which is around that 1.14 then obviously 1.15 zone and we'll see exactly how the market reacts up there okay now in terms of the uh, bond let's just bring up the chart the euro bond okay so the bond certainly are uh, basing or shall we say topping out here no new higher high, so again, that's a negative for the euro, uh, for, should we should say negative for sentiment. If the euro, euro bond starts to collapse from here, then you are going to see uh, potential yields rising, okay, and that will obviously cause the uh, the euro USD to start to appreciate, and that obviously will hurt the uh, economic, or should we say the, uh, the sentiment in equities, okay. So if we have a top here in the bond, okay, that mean, generally means a top in equities, and a top in equities, we all know, or shall we say, uh, uh, we all know what the risk aversion is next. Now, given the fact that oil obviously has topped out, 
you are looking at the euro usd certainly appreciating from from here in terms of risk aversion okay based on risk aversion based on anti qe comments based on the obviously uh, uh commodities top as well uh, so you have an unfilled gap on the euro on the sorry the bond and therefore you are looking for a potential thrust tire on the euro as well so this is quite an interesting scenario going forward um, from my perspective. Okay, so the four-hour chart, as you can see here, we have this H&S formation, which is failed. We've broken out that diagonal trend line now, and the market certainly seems to be testing that uh, key zone. So previous resistance equals support. So again, any pullback will be uh, held. And given the fact that we've had two bottoming tails here, you are looking at potentials for us to hire on the Euro USD, uh, the, the, or uh, even the Euro USD itself, and obviously this is the Bund itself. Now, you are looking for a, a potential pullback here, a pullback in the Bund, whether or not we can get back to this zone here at 162. We're currently 162.81, we get down to 1.62.2. But the real, like I said, target certainly remains in that 60 minute chart, which is the uh, 1.6180 level. Once we hit that 1.6180 level, then obviously the Bund starts to move higher, Euro starts to move lower, and equities will follow as well. So from my perspective, on the 10 minute and 60 minute and 4 hour chart, you are looking at weakness in the Bund. And therefore the Bund will fall, as, as, as will equities from my perspective. And the Euro USD should certainly look to appreciate. Okay, right. Uh, in terms of the uh, next uh, variable, which is oil. Uh, again, oil is very, very crucial here, folks. Now, if I bring up a daily chart of oil, what do you see? You see a potential uh, uh, argument here for a top. Let me just delete this here okay so you certainly have um, uh, inverted head and shoulders that's obviously played out now at $40 we hit a pivot high of 42.9 which is quite impressive okay to say the least so if we take the pivot high here just connect it across you can see how we've uh, certainly put in a nice uh, potential top here on oil okay so looking for a retest now on the blow on the downside and you have support at 40 and 39 so again all eyes will be in that zone okay so it's going to be interesting how that plays out in terms of the uh, next market moving event so that resistance zone has held around that $43 level and therefore you are now looking for a potential pullback and once we get into a pullback we'll see and revise exactly how the uh, the price of oil does there now I can bring up the chart of Brent as well if I have a chart of Brent bear with me okay so a chart of Brent so let's bring up a daily chart here first of all chart of Brent okay so again you can see that clay's here topping tail double top on the daily chart on the four hour chart itself again it's a failed uh, breakout so therefore it's certainly bearish looking to test the lower level 60 minute chart uh, again has a H&S formation so you certainly are holding support for now whether or not that lasts is a different equation altogether you have the right shoulder head and then obviously looking for right shoulder left shoulder head and then obviously looking for the move potentially lower so all eyes on there so keep an eye on the next market and what happens next okay with regards to the uh, the price of uh, brent okay so very very important okay so daily chart topping tail so if oil prices are obviously into resistance if if you can see the euro usd certainly into support uh, you can see that uh, uh, the bonds certainly have topped out as well so that qe trade certainly goes into reverse with mr weedman's comments concerns over greece etc etc and that qe trade or stimulus trade certainly is dead okay going forward so i think that's going to be absolutely crucial uh, adding all the uh, the fundamental bearish arguments that i uh, raised in the start then you are looking for a potential move lower now let's bring up the chart of euro stocks let's see exactly where this is positioned as you can see the 60 minute chart the bearish engulfing candle still remains in control obviously we put a topping tail in Daily chart remains bearish. 60 minute chart at the moment, classical HS formation uh, plan here or potential strategy. As you can see, the uh, the actual uh, head is here. Uh, you can see what we pushed from here to here. Or should we say, let's just draw this properly. Sorry. Uh, you can see that we've obviously put the left shoulder in here. Obviously, the head's gone in there. Looking for a right shoulder, we've held 75%. And therefore you have an unfilled gap below that needs to be closed at uh, the key level which is at 29.70 and therefore you're looking for a thrust lower okay so certainly looking for a movement lower from my perspective that's what i would be expecting and as you can see this diagonal trend line certainly is coming to play as well so a symmetrical wedge type pattern with unfilled gap below so certainly your first test will be that gap fill at 29.70 and then obviously your argument of scope to potentially move low okay 10 minute chart itself looks exhausted Okie dokie, so certainly looking to top out here, okay, so uh, the actual move certainly is exhausted, like I said, looking to potentially break down here, 
any breakdown you are looking at from this zone here and the next potential support let's just bring this up okay which is this zone here so 30 40 that's a key zone 30 30 again is another key zone but again bear in mind that you have gap fill at 29.70 and all eyes will be on that gap fill from my perspective okay so euro stock certainly is looking bearish uh, cross reference that with the euro 350 you can see that resistance is holding cross reference that with this stock 600 let's just bring up the daily chart we always switch for weekly and again that certainly seems to be holding as well so certainly indicating resistance okay so the german dax now let's see exactly where this juggernaut is positioned now the daily chart is an inside bar you can see that bearish candle on the uh, 17th certainly is, is in control consolidating and the bears are in certainly full control from my perspective 60 minute chart your classical bear flag pattern with the unfilled gap that needs to be filled at 9500 so all eyes in that gap and you are into that fib 75 percent at the zone hence my bearish bearish bias on the um, the german dax at this current juncture and also on friday and i am actually short the euro stocks as well so just to confirm my um obviously uh that uh, I am talking my book to a large extent, but that's basically my opinion. Even if I didn't have a trade, I'd certainly be short in the German DAX or short in European stocks from my perspective, okay? All right, uh, in terms of FTSE itself, let's just connect the dots, and uh, we certainly have there. Okay, we'll see exactly where this uh, takes us. So for now, no real uh, pattern yeah, has emerged uh, in terms of the, uh, the actual German DAX itself, other than the fact that you are consolidating here for a potential sell off from my perspective especially with the euro at lofty heights okay now you can cross reference that with the uh the mdax 50 again daily chart certainly is that resistance tech or share as you can see hell gap fill resistance and dying of resistance as well now let's bring up the chart of the volatility index of um, the french cac this is a daily chart so let's just see if we can find support which we can here and here so you have two levels of support. You have gap fill support here and gap fill support there. So given the fact that that's your first bastion or force the first level of support, that's the one that the what I would, from my perspective, expect the markets to bounce from. Okay. Now let's bring up the CAC. Uh, the, that's the euro stocks. Let's just look quick look at the CAC volatility index again. They both point to be quite important in determining a potential uh, risk on uh, risk off scenario. Should I say? Okay. So the um, the actual uh, chart of the CAC certainly. From a uh, support zone perspective, you can certainly expect a potential bounce here. Uh, but uh, from uh, if you want to be totally technical, then you are looking to gap down. Then obviously, bounce on the uh, technical uh, sphere. This if it was just based purely on technicals. Now you do have this diagonal trend line again, which is quite important from my perspective. That certainly seems to have held as far. So again, it certainly is a is an anticipation that you are looking at a potential pop in the VIX. Okay, and risk aversion trade to uh, to ensue now the french cac itself as you can see 10 minute chart certainly is into resistance uh, yeah. 60 minute chart looking at a lower high and obviously you've got this diagonal trend line to co contend with as well so certainly multiple areas of resistance from my perspective and looking for a potential move lower now we've got a chart the FTSE 100 you have a rising contracting wedge pattern again which is bearish topping tail doji type pattern 60 minute chart We've certainly pushed higher, but it certainly has been rejected very quickly. Uh, so that's not exactly a healthy sign uh, from my perspective. And then again, you are looking at supports being seen at that 6125 zone. If that fails and you are looking at 6110, then obviously you got support at the uh, 4100 zone, which I think we're more or less uh, at that 4100 zone uh, or 6100 zone. Well, we're six, we couldn't have six, almost 6262. Two, I can't remember now. In terms of FTSE, almost around the 6200 region now. Currently, you do have that support at 6120, so bear that in mind. Okay, that's the uh, FTSE 100. Bring up the uh, 10 minute chart, FTSE itself, and you can see that HS formation. We've obviously bounced off that 4190 now, so that bounces over. But any pop here is a shorting opportunity at the 6200, 6210, 6190 zone, which is quite important. Looking for a potential test for 200 MA. So, all eyes on the 200 MA for the FTSE 100. Okay, I think that's a market wrap now in terms of European indices. Wish you the best uh, for the trading week ahead, folks. Okay, be sure to visit cfts.com for your trading needs. Goodbye.